Hello and welcome to This Contains Garlic. You are here with your hosts, Georgia Garlic and... Mark Garlic. And we're back. It's 2023. It's like the third week of January and our podcast is finally emerged. How's it going? How's January, everybody? <laughs> how's it? How's it cracking? You know what? The last podcast, I was really sprightly. I was like, guys, you can fucking do this. You've got it. I feel mentally really clear. I feel great on the second week of January and I'm about to have a mental breakdown. So, yeah, I mean, it's going well. <laughs> but would you say that that is warranted of your uh, lifestyle or your life in general or is that just due to a fluctuation in internal <laughs> you're hormones? You're, trying to, you're about to say... George is about to come on her period and she's fucking in a bad mood, you know what I mean? So we yeah, just need to well, make I'm it clear to the, to the correct. listeners that my hormones are playing havoc. Yeah, probably. I'm probably about five days out and I literally just want to kill everybody around me and everything, do you know what I mean? Including you, Mark. You're lucky you're not on the get rid of list. If, um, you, <laughs> um, if you had to kill me, how do it? Well, we've had this discussion before and it's been quite in depth, actually. And you think that I physically couldn't kill you, like in the sense of like, I would never be able to just like stab you or like... Well, you would, but you'd have to do it I just think you surprise. think you're on guard all the time. You're off guard. I could get you at most points. I My... think the best way for somebody to die... Well, give me a, give me a hard example. I want to hear, I want to hear your tactics and I'll tell you whether or not you're right or wrong. Oh, when you go to sleep before me? Yeah, you know? but that's what I'm saying. It's always in a cowardice manner. When you're fucking on the preacher call, having a break, do you know what I mean? <gasps> Watching a YouTube video in the gym? Changing <laughs> songs whilst I max out my, my, my PBs. Do you know what? I will say the music's a bit, a bit limited at the moment. Maybe other people... I don't know if... I think mu like music and exercise mm. are two things that go re like hand, hand in, in hand. hand. Without yeah. music, I can't exercise. <laughs> like I could. I mean, the other day, people Mark that got don't, his headphones. Uh, the people that exercise go to the gym willingly without headphones. Yeah, You're those are the people who want breed. to start a conversation with you, though, and that's You're a different a problem. breed. Um, <laughs> I try. I do. I, I love the gym. The, you can't. Right. You can't train hard without listening to music. That's no, because no, there's very, nothing like something, yeah, it's like, like an alter ego. It's like you kind of think, like the music I listen to and I train, I'm like, An advertisement fuck? for life insurance whilst you're trying to psych <laughs> yourself up for. Because <laughs> that's all Jim's play is like. Yeah, the, the radio. radio, yeah, literally. I mean, but then again, I, I would say that at the moment... I was kind of hoping that maybe there'd be a few more techno sets that have come out. Bit of like fucking pizzazz since New Year. I but it seems just, that everybody's was, New Year uh, was a letdown. <laughs> I was talking to your mother today about uh, bit weird music. Bit to my mum, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, about music. And they went through their CD collection and they had like four metres worth of CDs. Yeah, I, I'm so not surprised by that. Like my dad was like... When he bought a CD, though, my God, was it utilised on repeat. Um, I specifically when did you, remember. Well, on the f uh, family vacation. Yeah, like if you like drove to France or something. or Oh, actually, when we used to hire a car, my dad used to take a <laughs> CD with him on holiday. But of course you used to take CDs because how fucking weird. We used to have used to DVD a players. Yeah, a we also used to have CD. What's that? Walkmans. Discman. Discman. Discman, yeah. I remember, I specifically remember as a child being given. You couldn't go past a birthday or, a, you know, a Christmas without getting like now 97 or. <laughs> what is it now? Now fucking let's give yeah. up. Like literally. No, that is. <laughs> Do you Surely think it's probably. Things, no, it's not so. going because the CD world is dead, isn't it? Which is a shame. No, because last year I was reading that in 2022 was the highest were the record sales vinyls worldwide. Yeah, People a are vinyl and a CD to, are two very different things. Well, vinyls are even older than CDs. Yeah, exactly. So that's nothing to do with a CD. Would you buy a CD of Akon's hits in 2014? Unlikely I mean, now. I, just I, get, I would died. do out of nos the nostalgic value of... Akon 2014, to... what? And where would you play it exactly? Not even my laptop doesn't even have a CD. Yeah, well, <laughs> I struggle to find something yeah. to play. Because... Uh, 
I mean, I think your 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 mom said that she, they were gonna get a, a like a hi fi, like old school CD with a CD player. What? My back. dad would never go backwards on tech. Yeah, I think so. So oh, they can play like their music. Maybe because <laughs> I think Chris used to make your mom burn your mom's CDs. Maybe that's his his what love his love language. I would don't think my your dad has made your mom mixtapes. Like, are you lying? I wanna make you up and oh, down to you say stuff. To. Actually, today we were thinking. Mm. What would be a good podcast to go to first? And I think it's um it's quite a relative topic. And I think before we get into it, um, mm. going forward with podcasts, I think probably listeners will want to know like what the gist is going to be. Like if you followed us in the sense of the change of business and everything, you know, probably people are like, what the fuck's going on? So with our podcast, um, we're going to take probably slightly smaller topics and we're going to break them down now our aim like last year we did say that we were wanting to get people on board with our podcast though obviously not just us um just obviously due to everything we didn't actually get around to executing that um but this year we are obviously very much wanting to speak with others on our podcast about things that obviously are massively going to help you in a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. So between myself and Mark, obviously there's going to be the general chit-chat and all of the shenanigans that go on in our life, combined Mm -hmm. with obviously educational, you know, mindset topics, factual topics, lots of different things. And then we are hoping, obviously that we can collaborate with people to come on the podcast as well. But you're not really coming on the podcast, though, are you? You're just joining on a Zoom call. Um, (laughs) You're not not in the studio. Maybe we'll get a studio. Maybe it would be easier. Um, But, yeah, so that's just a little bit of a side note. But today what we're going to do is we're going to go into a topic which I think is very relevant for a number of different aspects in people's lives. It doesn't necessarily have to be health and well-being, Mm -hmm. but we're going to talk about why is it that we leave things until it's rock bottom or you are at rock bottom. So what do we mean by that, Mark? (laughs) Just uh, take a deep breath. It uh, reminds me of like... Just do it like when you're at school and you do your homework when you get to school the day of and you just rush it because for some people, I guess, rock bottom or leaving it or procrastinating or kind of putting it off could be a variety of things, but it's like leaving, neglecting yourself, whether it's your mental health or your physical health, to the point where you know, you have to do something, whether it's going to the doctor and they say that you're pre-diabetic or, I don't know, it's playing on your mental health and it's affecting your day-to-day life and how you interact with your colleagues and your uh, friends and family. Could be a variety of things in different shapes or form where, you know, you kind of know what you need to do and how you should be doing it, but you don't and you kind of neglect. No, I disagree with that. No, do you disagree with that? Yeah, heavily disagree with that because I feel like it's not always, there's so many, like, the one thing that I think a lot of people, and this is definitely a completely separate podcast topic, but environment is everything. And when you're used to certain things in your life or you see certain things or you grow up around certain things or you experience certain things in your environment, in a way it can... I don't agree that we leave things to rock bottom because we're lazy. I don't agree with that. No, I, I didn't think, say that. I no, said you know what you should be doing, but you just neglect. But you don't know what you should you... be doing when you're like. Well, you I'll talk from experience. When you're fucking massively overweight, you've mm. got a drug problem. You drink too much. You're isolating well, you know what yourself. What you should be doing is not drinking and absolutely not. Drugs. When you're in a le- absolutely not. <clears throat> Yeah, but you also... You clearly haven't been in the same position. But not position. talking from a... Not a teenager's perspective. No, I'm not talking a, about teenage years. I'm talking... No, Mark, you cannot make the assumption that you know what you're doing and so the reason you get to rock bottom... A lot of people are at complete despair at rock bottom. They have no idea what to do and how it can help you. Most of the time, people might have tried things and failed because they've been a wrong methodology of working it out. Yeah. They could be... You know, this isn't something that... 
you sit, you know, I, I, I say this time and time again, we sit here in very, very privileged, entitled positions as to what we know in our jobs because we've learned it and because mm. we've educated ourselves. Mm. But it's also our fucking job, do you know what I mean? And if you didn't want to progress in your job, then you wouldn't have learned what we've learned. Yeah, I'm not However, talking about the finer details. I'm talking about the general things no. that if most people, if you took nine, 10 people off the side of the road... No, you're making a vast statement would, here. They would know that generally not consuming a lot of alcohol exercising eating a nutritious diet okay you know, Mark. These are the well, why don't you go and ask can... an alcoholic what they think about that that they think they shouldn't be drinking enough no you've yeah, got but... a, effectively an issue psychologically emotionally yeah. there are things that are stemming you towards that you're not thinking I don't need to drink this. You're thinking I'm going to drink this. It's exactly the same with a drug addict. It's exactly the same with somebody that's obsessed with eating or or not eating. There's always this emotional thing. Yeah, but thing on the way to rock bottom, there's always that discussion of you know you probably shouldn't be doing it, but you still do it. Because no. for whatever reason, nature versus nature and urges you to continue that. That that habit. No, because I had many many years. If I went from personal experience that. Mm. I wasn't going to do anything about it. If but anybody you knew, no, in I your didn't head. until it got so fucking bad. Yeah. Like, and I still didn't know. I went to do a very drastic approach in my life. I did exactly what I do very, very well, which was literally get rid of everything around <sighs> me and take myself away. Do you know what I mean? That's literally genuinely what I did. I was like, I don't think I can do anything in this current yeah. environment that I'm in. Yeah, so I have you... to go somewhere drastic. Did I think that was the best option at the time that I was at? No. Actually, when I was probably at my worst, mm. I probably didn't get help. Do you know what I mean? Like there's this, you work, you're resenting it. Yeah, like you're you, never gonna- You've just said that environment is a huge influencing factor. So you willing and knowing to change your environment to help you- No, I went to a drastic fat loss camp. Yeah, but I'm just saying is that's that a right change. option? No, you're I'm desperate. not saying it's right or don't wrong. Know. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I'm saying you, that you had the cognitive choice to understand that there needed to be a change. No, I had many people telling me also. Oh, okay. So it's very different if you yeah. have multiple people telling you from different angles that you're yeah. unhealthy, generally, that you're I fucking would, obese, uh, you're this, I, I, you're that. I can't speak for everybody, but I would imagine I'm imagining that there has to be some internal narrative that would whisper, depending on how strong or uh, faint those internal narratives can be, mm. that. I would say for maybe like some almost people, like a homeostatic response to to like no you know your body understands but mark nobody understands Damn. their body like very few people understand their body it's only when you switch on to your health and and this is I, you know, if you look at the stats, like worldwide, or even just in the UK alone, like mm. it's very obvious a lot of people do not understand or listen to their body. You know what I mean? There's plenty well, I think, of people I think that I abuse. I would say that if you took 10 people off the streets and asked them, they would give you a somewhat of a relatively coherent answer to improving their health. It's just they just choose not to do it. I, I actually really disagree with you. No. I do not think we are at the level now where people mm. still even know. I there is know, still things true. where you're also thinking that most of the... You know, there's this whole argument. Now, there was a podcast put out to a very large podcast a couple of weeks ago, which obviously mm. got quite a lot of attention in our industry because it was obviously health yeah. um, and about weight loss and calorie counting. And it was with um, Tim Spector, who did some COVID shit and he's a professor and people suck on his balls for no fucking reason. And um, yeah. he is the perfect example of taking a, a fucking science and utilizing his method for people to do things. And he then thinks that every other method, which is utilized off of a scientific based equation mm. is then Anyway, long story short, it got people discussing whether or not, you know, calorie counting was relevant, mm. not relevant, you know. Yeah. And I think it's quite obvious to say that, like, most people 
really just like don't understand it because there's just too much option out there like everybody and i'll say this time and time again everybody with nutrition and with health Mm. has got a personal experience and that is a fucking problem i know it's great that we're all different but that personal experience then in people's heads warrants an opinion or what they classify as authority over a subject Mm -hmm. now tim Spector, for example is stating that you know he didn't say that he's pretty much saying that like you know gut health is life and if you if your gut's unbalanced and you can't do shit all well it's known fact that in a human body for example you know let's just talk about humans and not mice that studies have taken you know that if you are unhealthy on a stat, you know, you've gone to the doctors and they've said, oh God, you've got weight to lose or, you know what I mean? You smoke too much, you drink too much, blah, blah. If you're doing things to your life, in your lifestyle, which you know is probably not perfect, which most of us do or have done, mm-hmm. you know, your health is, you know, you're not going to be totally balanced inside. Now, what is the word balance and what does it even fucking mean for most people? Do I think that when somebody is morbidly overweight, they need to be thinking about their gut microbiome? Or do I think I need they need to be thinking about interventions so they stop being so morbidly overweight? Obviously, interventions. Now, creating problems before you even get to a solution mm. with general pop, you know, joint is a problem because what happens is then people go, well, I can't do any of this in case my gut bacteria is just unbalanced. You know, it's like, well, this is counterproductive because you're actually, somebody like Tim Spector, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. is stopping people look after or action in their health by creating something that supposedly people need or without it or without the scientific or the tests and this about your gut, you can't achieve. And it's fucking the, nonsense. Yeah, I can appreciate achieve. he's probably helped a number of people. I'm not even going to get into too much yeah, about it's, it. It's clear as day that it's just marketing, like, at least be honest. Yes, but in the sense of what it does to a general population and why people let go to rock bottom, and when they are at rock bottom, they go and seek help, or if they can even see the fact they need help, mm. you can then see what it's like in what we always like to say, there's plenty of fish in the fucking sea. There are tons, and they're all saying different things. So actually channeling into making a change I do think normally needs to come from just clarity and stuff and I don't think people have clarity I think the first step for making a change is wanting to change Mm. you know once you've acknowledged that you are or being alerted that you have to change for example what alerted alerted, me being alerted externally in, in the sense of like people saying you need to change like an intervention or people criticizing you generally doesn't alert people it alerts people that they need to change but doesn't necessarily prompt people to change no i would say it goes actually the complete opposite and this is the thing a behavior where where people effectively nag or blame you for the reason of why you are is is is, there's so much about this actually behavioral therapy is like when somebody starts a conversation with you where they don't necessarily agree with it and they start it with no or you're like this or it has a genuine to the person which is receiving that information they have already got a negative connotation yeah, over it off. immediately yeah. they're not going to your psychology is not going to change they've already in their head gone fuck off mm-hmm. so it's like we carry on going it's exactly saying like you look really fat like you look like you're very overweight you look like you're mm. very unhealthy you look like all of these things mm. in somebody's mind that is receiving end the minute you say to them mm. you're fat they've mm. already said fuck off and it's because we know deep down mm. that obviously we're not the same as what society wants us to be you know what i mean and then that's well i guess to be healthy in a degree i'm not somebody that agrees that if you've got mass amounts of weight on you, that it is healthy. Now, that is my opinion, and I'm mm. warranted with the years of my, you know, my expertise to say that. And also in my own position, I know mm. when I was morbidly overweight, you know, and obese, I was not healthy. And so it is these things where I, you know, in, 
A in person's general, got to want to, uh, and uh, much like when you go to AA, the first step is like, hi, my name's Mark and I'm an alcoholic. It's like understanding. <laughs> You've done that before. Understanding <laughs> and acknowledging that there is an issue that needs to be addressed. And it's not necessarily always overweight people. It could be... Yeah, like alcohol, any, drugs. Yeah, it could be vice that you have. Um, Sex. And you just need to, and it's that willingness to, and I guess... Uh, accepting that there's an issue for some people is it can be quite challenging and like I think if we always view things as that there's problems we never find a solution I think the world is also painted everything with rose tinted glasses where you can't, you have to be successful you have to be this you have to always be winning and on top and extremely on top. you know just happy you always and, gotta be on top Mark have you um, <laughs> I love the fact you're right to analyze. He wants to do some sort of sexual analysis, like, don't you? Um, no. I don't mind. Top, bottom, sideways. Oh, fuck. Standing. Sideways, do you know what I mean? Honestly. Standing. Standing. I already told you that we we definitely don't have sex standing. Do you know what I mean? I've just told everybody try, on the podcast though. last that the idea of standing up and having sex is not something that I've ever thought was very practically orgasmic. Like... I mean, <laughs> But moving forward... You could uh, try and work on your hip mobility with an oh. overhead... I don't have... I don't need any work on my hip mobility. You need work on your hip mobility. I think mine is perfectly fucking fine. And I can swivel in multiple different directions mm. with absolutely no kind of feedback. So it's okay, do you know what I mean, Mark? So, yeah, maybe bottom is better. <laughs> maybe for, Lots for all... Lots of swivelling in many directions. Oh, God. Fuck. Anyway, back to being rock bottom, <laughs> literally, yeah. literally. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, I and then like, under, like admitting that you've got a problem is it kind of goes against the grain of modern society where everybody. I don't think many people, unless they've got a therapist, were or have been taught behavioural therapy in any way, in a sense of speaking through things with logic, um, or how to behave in situations. Or I don't think. Until you get past it, you can openly say, I've got a problem. Like, well, well, what's the definition of getting past it? Well, starting a journey, understanding the process, going through it first, lose, you know, losing your first you know, amount of weight. I'm talking on weight loss here. Mm, mm. Um, I think people, you know, they'll seek help. Yeah. Um, but I don't think sometimes it's very hard to say, you know what, I'm really fat. I like, I'm really overweight. I'm about to be, you know, classified as a diabetic. Yeah. Um, whilst I say this, the cat's going to be diabetic because he's eating the dog's food as we literally speak. Yeah, Stormzy, I don't think you should be eating the dog's food. Well, I, I did give him a tin of tuna this morning. Oh, my God, he's actually eating it. I wonder. Maybe the dog's stress starving. eating. Stress eating from the fact that we've actually mentioned him on a podcast because oh, his life is so eating. fucking stressful. But, no, I do think admitting that you've actually got an issue is something that you're you're in a way of a weight loss approach it's kind of like you've accepted it by then going and actioning it that's enough mm. for the first step you don't mm. necessarily have to stand there and go i'm fucking obese do you know what i mean mm. i'm going to do something about it it's kind of like I'm going to go and contact somebody mm. to help me or mm. I'm going to I'm going to research the first step of contact and that is the first step in any journey is actually just mm. contacting somebody mm. and because that does show a willingness and want to change and I do agree mm. that there has to be some sort of stemming factor to want to change otherwise you're fighting against this now this is actually an interesting conversation because going back to environment mm. we had the conversation obviously because we spend all fucking day talking to each other mm. but uh, you said to me that if I had been brought up in a mm. family mm. who had weight issues in the sense of being very overweight, mm. would I have likely have made a change? And I said no. Jeez, when did we have this conversation? You're a space cake, honestly. Wow. Um, <laughs> oh, oh no, literally. Yeah, maybe I am. Um, and and I and I kind of said, well, no, I think. When you're, as we go back to environment, mm. if you're only used to seeing oh, yes, people, yeah, oh, well yeah, done, Mark, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Earth yeah, to Mark. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, when you're used to seeing people that might be overweight around you, maybe it's family, it's friends, you know, mm. maybe everybody's mm. in the same situation. You enjoy, mm. you know, drinking, mm. eating, mm. you know what I mean? Nothing sort of punished or opinionated or, you know what I mean? People just, yeah. you know what I'm trying to say? Like yeah. when you come from a family that are all, there are all the same kind of shape and size, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're every, less likely to see in, it as a problem. In, like if you are like, in a family of four p- individuals and you're the only person that's overweight and yeah, everyone else is me. really <laughs> in shape. Well, and then, know. and then you're, if anything on my side, it would of the family, be, it would be, uh, you know, judged upon more, you know, when oh, you're not, heavily. When like you're I know so brand. many people who have got, who have always had like, maybe like their parents are overweight or they might start struggled mm. with their weight throughout their life or, you know, and their family's all been the same that they mm. never passed any judgment on them ever. They never even were told you're a fat fuck or you can't fit through the door or you're, fa- you know what I mean? Don't come here because you're fat or you're not going to yeah. fit into that. Hey, or fatty boom, boom. Who from a very, very young pies. age, I was told that I was overweight and I think, that is not okay and i never think that this is okay for anybody to go through as i've always said there's polar opposites there's the abusing somebody's health on one end which is mm. encouraging people to be overweight mm. and their environment is not helping them but then there's mm. the other end of the scale where there's that huge judgment which can fuck you up like yeah. it's like really fuck you up even to now do you know what I mean I'm not even going to pretend like certain things haven't affected me I'm going to pretend that my attitude over certain things is going to change or how people spoke to me I'm never going to be able to forget you know yeah. it's but you know that happy medium I guess is where people most people want to sit but it is that thing where when you come from an environment where you're not seeing it anywhere like anywhere like my whole family you know I didn't deal I wasn't around people that were overweight and all of my friends at school were none of them were overweight you know Mm, and mm. I was overweight and struggling to you know managing that especially through teenage to 20 you know what I mean like is fucking hard because whether or not you want to like it or not, you still want to be those girls that you're hanging out with, not be them, but like you want to dress how they're dressing. You want to, Mm, but mm, you've got mm. emotional issues that you've effectively carried through with you. Mm. Combat, you know, combine that with like people calling you fat in your family. (gasps) Oh, you're such a prick, Mark, honestly. Wait until we, wait until I see, we're going to have an intervention. (laughs) God, it should have happened long ago. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to sit your your family. Yeah, but now. you brought up in a family. Like, let's talk about your family. Your family. I reckon your mum may pass comment if somebody was, <laughs> <laughs> like, she does pass comment on a lot of things. Like, if you look tired, Mark's dead. Like, who knows? Like, you know. But you were also in a family which didn't. I don't think your family. You know, when you had weight on you or when mm, your family, mm, like some of your mm, family members have mm, obviously got, you know, yeah. I'm not going to lie, you know, weight issues. Yeah, that's Did true. people pass judgment or was it only when you became part of the industry? You know what I mean? Where people started to talk about it. When you were growing up, were mm. people judging upon what you looked like? Yeah, obviously your peers, but no, like but parents, not so much, no. Family. You know, you're either... Uh, yeah, p- comments are passed here and there where people think that they're, you know, jokes. But they obviously, when you're in those formative years, you just never know saying certain things to to certain individuals can be quite triggering. Yeah, um, fuck you, mum. <laughs> yeah, but then obviously you've got all your peers at, at school. It's very, you know, whether it's banter or not, you know, that can be taken many numerous different ways we can lead you down a road of body yeah but like you as a child or... already looked like you were about to step on stage do you know what i mean there's a photo of you that literally yeah. looks like you were yeah like... but i think when once i was diagnosed with epilepsy and i was taking all that medication that slows Bubbles, your, your yeah. metabolic rate down quite significantly and i became a very overweight teenager you know, yeah, combine that with like then, yeah, male that acne, with braces, braces a head shit, brace. You know I mean? Yeah, so it's, it's not it's, great. <laughs> yeah, the, the first regime. couple of years, you know, not ideal. And then. But you you've know, got very, very good friends from school. I have absolutely none. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, and I've right, always been okay th- with that. I just. 
Yeah, I think I a couple of them I could probably reignite. I think some as well, memory, I think maybe. the first like three, four years of high school, especially at an all boys school, everyone kind of has to find their hierarchy. So the first kind of three years are always very combative with it, whether it's bullying or name calling or fighting or you know there's hierarchy that needs to be set and then as you kind of get older that's when people mature a little bit more and yeah know. but then I'm also like I'm as I've always said I'm not that old so I can't really make like comment on being old because I'm not that old but I do think some people I just think fuck like when are you going to grow up but then again the thing is I'm not high school there's a lot of people a lot of people as well you know peak in high school oh massively so but it does give you a bit of an ego boost when you're in you know when you grow up you're like actually thank god I didn't peak at high school because those are the formative years you know what I mean like where you're going to find your husband or your wife or your partner there's nothing worse than peaking at high school Oh, there's plenty of people that don't do it. And you're like, oh, God, what do you look like now? Do you know what I mean? But then that's a very judgmental standpoint. But then I also think, well, fuck you, you were a bully. Yeah, so. they were judgmental <laughs> like, literally, towards I was like, you in the first place. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you're not... It wasn't yeah. coming from a, un, you know, an unconditionally, unconditional place. It was like, oh, you used to call me a fat cunt. I actually had one of my biggest... I don't know if it's a satisfaction... Maybe it's like it is satisfaction. Let's not fucking lie. This was years ago, but when I um, I was contacted by an old a girl that I went to school with, oh god, it actually gives me shudders. But anyway, um, <laughs> saying, um, "Hey Georgia, like I hope you're well. Like I was just wondering, like, would you be able to help me in like my weight loss journey?" And I was like, "You fucking prick!" I was like oh funny that you're overweight now do you know what I mean I'm glad I'm glad because you've also learned that you probably hate it you also hate being fucking people putting yeah. judgment and, and calling you names foot, and saying yeah. that you're a fucking waste of time and space you know what I mean I'm re- I hope you've experienced that because that's exactly what I experienced and now you want my fucking help how contradictory but you know it's one of those things why that I think was pro- it did give me satisfaction because I thought you know what yeah it's not it's very difficult not to be petty but it, <laughs> it's very Easy I can to hold be a grudge, petty. fuck. I mean, I've let go of grudges. I've, I think edgingly, but I would say that you have, like, from formative years, you definitely have a very good group of friends. I would say from school, none of my friends come from school. No, no, I've, we're very always, and we've always been very good with the, with the buggers. Yeah, but your friends are also very, like, polite and well-mannered, and I just think, like, British yeah, people in general just... are just so ill-mannered, it's just appalling. Yeah, that's... Like, it's, it's just, like, bottomless though. brunches or fuck off, you it's know? the environment, though. Like, you can't... They, we can't the, there's no expectation. Like, it would be almost impossible to... I do fight with my mind as to we're normal or not. Like To discipline British children the same way that we did it, we got it done in Zimbabwe. Yeah, because you were beaten up in Zimbabwe. Exactly. Like, like there's only my mum beat there's me only... up. No, she didn't. She's, she she did not. bite me. My mum forgive. Don't lie, because she'll be listening to this. Child and I'll tell you the reason. Child services. I did try and call Childline numerous times. My mum and dad probably received multiple messages as me a child. So I mean, it was the child that used to run away all the time to the end of the driveway until I realised that I wasn't going to get very far with like fuck all <laughs> money, and being like six years old. But. Um, uh, they, my sister, who's like inherently selfish, who I think would happily admit that, um, wasn't very good at sharing as a child. And we didn't really have like the most living relationship, me and my sister growing up. We kind mm. of despised each other. Only when we spent a lot of time together on like a holiday, we were okay. But between that, we pretty much, yeah, we, we didn't even hug until my wedding day. Anyway, she had a new doll's house given to her mm. and I wanted to use the doll's house yeah. and Emma said no. So yeah. I bit Emma and so my mum bit me back to teach me. Yeah, but... That's... I was like, am I a cannibal? I'm not sure. Like, literally, who bites people? That's fucked. Moral of the story is... That you Share. Just, sharing is caring. Yeah. Apart from if it's like mashed potato or chocolate and then you don't get any of it. Um, I would say I share quite a lot. Jeez, have you bumped your head this morning? 
oh, I wouldn't get me started as to what I share a lot with you. I share a fucking lot with you. Don't even yeah, go. Do you want me to? Let me just. Should I, a, I write? Should I? In a couple and a marriage, you, if everything is. No, it's not. Down the middle, 50 50. This is 20 Now, this is the problem. Is, is, is it 50 50? I think so. What? Even if you don't have kids? Yeah. Like, it's 50 50. I think for our lifestyle, it works 50 50. But do I think it's quite. Em- is the word emasculating for a man? That, uh, yeah, like, I, d- I don't know about that 50 50. Why? Because I think this is a modern day couple, and so I think would, sometimes, what would a modern day couple like, be? I've dealt with many clients who don't want their husbands knowing what, how much money they spend on things, and so we'll have their own separate finances. Actually, yeah. a lot of my married couple, like, clients have been, you know. I don't think just because you're married, you have to fucking give away half of it. If anything, you've probably got like 90% of what I, like, you know, have. <laughs> I <Like>, literally <laughs> I'm just doing nothing. Do you know what I mean, I'm clearly having a breakdown today. Yeah, what are you t- talking nonsense? Like, I'm not talking about finances. I'm talking about overall application in every aspect of a well, relationship. Well, you said the other day that if you didn't, in what? Every Every aspect of a relationship, whether it's chores or um, you think it should all be emotional 50/50? support well, yeah i think so i think it's fair 50 50 yeah but i'm not i wouldn't say i'm very good at emotional support yeah but th- that's when people there's given time i'm really good at cleaning areas. the house so so, well, <laughs> so that's my so that's my offering <laughs> That's my fifty fifty is I'm really good at cleaning, but I've got fuck all emotional support. No, I do have emotional support, but I just show it in a very different way. And I but I've never, ever wanted to be hugged and kissed, ever. Well, that's your up- that's your upbringing, though. It's been that's the way you've been formed, and and, and <laughs> my mum's probably sat there going, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, well, your pa- your grandparents and your parents—it's uh, not Pretty exactly much like, like large like, elbows, and that's about it. Like when I f- when you the first time we met your granny, they were like, you, 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 "What they did call you her say? granny? It's grandma." Grandma, sorry. <laughs> Grandma, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, gr- granny doesn't like beards. Don't rub your face on her face. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't kiss her. Don't do. You know, don't touch the woman. Well, how yeah, can well, you expect to then be? It was only grown last week with... that you thought my grandfather sounded like King Charles. He <laughs> does sound like King Charles. He does because they're very well spoken. <laughs> He's so posh. Yeah, but like I will say, like I quite I quite rate that. Like. Um... It's pretty, that I'm not is, against anybody's accent. Like I love all accents. No, I, I sometimes think you think Cockney I'm very accents. posh. Yeah, cock, yeah, you do have a posh accent. Mm, I think I've got a twang to being a posh accent. Like I wouldn't say I've got plums in my mouth. No. Like no. my parents really, really wanted me to speak better as a child and as a teenager. Like I was horrific. But every parent my, did that. Though. Even my oh parents no, would Mark, be like, my language is atrocious as a child. Like. Yeah, well, it's, I don't it's think Carol would the have generation. Up, yeah. Like, most children, you, the other day, there was a three-year-old oh, that yeah. said, fuck, you know, what the fuck? I was actually quite surprised. I, mean? like, I thought, God, that's, that's literally my child in five yeah, years. Yeah, but then <laughs> you're, also passing, you're also passing the kid on an iPad at the age of three. and Feeding you know, it six monster energy drinks yeah, at fucking come on, Like, yeah. it's, the, this day and age, it's like, you can't, you can't, I don't think you can keep that away from children this day and age. You know, they're going to be saying all sorts of crazy stuff. We were saying the other day, though, um, whether or not, like, you only become, like, an official adult when you have children. I just... (laughs) I don't know. Like, you could... A lot of people I know that don't have children who are older... You could be living that dink lifestyle, double income, no... Yeah, fucking wonderful. And you could Um, still be an an adult with that, running a business. No, but, like, is is the fun... (laughs) I don't know, but this is what even people with children had Mm. discussed with me. And the same with those without, is that those without children that I have known or worked with that are maybe 40 plus, 50 plus with no children, Mm. seem to be like fucking jokes. And they have so much banter. They have such a great time in their life. (laughs) And then you speak to the ones with kids and it seems like they're really responsible they've got to be on you know edge. on edge yeah like literally and it, i don't not know whether that's a certified like adult that, it's just having children like that, i don't think but then there's also very different like you look at m- the vast majority of my friends that have had kids they've all got nannies and help and 
you know, it's the yeah, virus. Um, so then, like, I guess when you when you do have that external childcare and minding, and you only but I'd one hundred percent have a nanny. Why would I make my life any harder no, of than course, it is? I'm not saying. I'm that not saying that I wouldn't be physically it, capable to bring you know. up a child in any way. But I want to work. That's the thing. I'm not going to be sat at home fucking around with a child. I'm sorry. I look. Everybody's got different opinions over this. You know, it was only like a few say, weeks ago that yeah. I was having a conversation with somebody that they had a complete opposite. I'm just sick and tired of other people's opinions. To be brutally honest. Yeah, but here we are sharing our opinion. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just fucking sick and tired of myself. It's second week of January and I'm just fucking over oh, I this. Might edit, I might edit that out if I have enough <laughs> effort. I'm just sick of fucking being <laughs> Yeah, mate. I know. But this is the thing is it's like you always, I think, I think that's um, how podcasts were fucking formed. Was yeah. literally just having a conversation about. I think things. having children, it, it really you you haven't got really much time to think of much else, which I think is a good thing for a certain. Yeah, because I overanalyze shit all the time. It's really because yeah, if you kind of live inside your own head and there's a constant internal narrative of, am I you know that productivity anxiety or am am I you know what's life all about and all this other you know really deep things that can run through your mind a thousand different thoughts I think we need to have a shrooms experience in a minute (laughs) you know I guess when you have kids there there is no time for that this is the thing like I I get very heightened around children where I'm like oh god that's bloody annoying or oh god that's annoying but you just as a parent and I've seen it they just ignore it you've literally got shit to do yeah, and I totally respect that. But then yeah. I'm also like, but maybe there that's... is no direct link in human psych. There is not, and they've actually proven this recently that like happiness and optimism isn't directly linked to you know like having a child. Now that means that yeah. like a lot of people had children for happiness and to see yeah. happiness yeah. doesn't always bring that for a lot of people. People Statistic, always say to me, "You're no. going to change your mind." I physically yeah, can't but see it. I might. If you look at the hard, you know, the data, when you look at, you know, in the UK, 40 odd percent of people get divorced. The And the the main leading factor for divorce is generally finances and or the impact of on the children had on your well, they say that what is ingrained in us through years and years and years, and I think this comes from, this is quite a, me- a male side, because obviously, like, fucking men have had everything for years, do you know what I mean? But we can't really say it on a female side just yet, because mm. unfortunately, we've been so restrained for so many fucking years that we can't really form the evidence based off of it. But if we're talking from a male brain on having children, they say that... When a man has a child, well, he doesn't fucking do all, he just squirts inside when you. A man you know, when, a fu- yeah. watches, when a man po- watches, when a watches a, woman a woman fucking carry and give birth a to a bloody man child. Out of a, or a woman small out of man, her. Jesus. I hope small I don't give child. birth to a small man syndrome. Do you know small know? man or small woman. But, you know, they go China. through that element. The woman, like, they. Um, Usually what happens with a man's brain in the sense of financial working terms is that they think because they've had a child, the child is now a burden on their salary and their lifestyle overall, which can lead men wanting to... What happens when you're like, I need to earn more money, I need to do better because now I've had a child, I can't not have the child, you know, 100% perfect and things, you know, and it does spur something in brains where it can actually make people really unhappy. Like... Sure. I just don't think the communication is sometimes there between relationships. And this is, again, referring yeah, back to... and then to you just combine that with... Like all of our studying and stuff in couples. And change your, uh, you know, reduction. You get so tired and because, everything is you know, so, so stressful. There's in the um, podcast we did about uh, the reason why we're saying goodbye to the Arrow Club and moving forward with yes. Soak Up was... Obviously, like, throughout the years, we've done a lot of studying and research into... Um, couples and functioning you know partnerships and marriages and behavior within those uh, relationships and mm. the effect of influence in relationships and environment and all of this that comes with I guess making any significant change in your life and it's obviously mm. the reason we are very I mean number one we're a couple we do everything as a business like mm. we obviously run one together and you know obviously that's a great move being also wanting to work with couples but we actually do it based off of the fact that it's proven that like your partner can have a significant 
influence on oh, how you, you behave yeah, massively yeah. and also can have an influence on what you eat thing you know everything it's not just to do with health it's to do with finance your job mm-hmm. all that comes with it and i think it's just important to reiterate that you know everybody every relationship's got its issues shall we say mm-hmm. where we walk you know work through it and it is proven that if you work together on something and communicate you know yeah. as empathetic as you can with one another with empathy mm. and listening and communicate you can achieve like fucking amazing yeah. things and uh, but work against it and you're on it's your route difficult. it's very yeah. very very difficult and so i think you know anything's possible i think like people that have children have got their reasons for children we're always going to be but do you less. think uh, a couple for example would wait to wait for rock bottom to seek out any form of uh, help or because my honest opinion is help, maybe not externally from from a professional but even getting to the point where you know they try and reconcile their own relationship whether it's i don't know i don't think anybody ever wants to say if we're talking from a health and a and, a, and how when you don't no, let me just go back. When you feel confident in yourself, mm. and this could come from you don't have much self-esteem. It doesn't need to come from the fact that you're overweight or mm. you know what I mean. Mm. But I'm just saying mm. you've got low mm. Uh, mm. self-esteem. You maybe don't have a very strong relationship where there's compliments coming either way or somebody doesn't show the effort on the mm. relationship on either part, you know. Mm. And the same mm. with if you don't look good and i'm talking when i say if you don't look good mm. i'm talking from inside of your brain yeah, if you know you don't narrative. look good that's personal context you know this yeah. is not you don't look good you are not going to perform with enthusiasm in in much many aspects of your life at all because you don't you know when you don't look good in your head your confidence is already knocked yeah. so the way that you behave in situations yeah is very, very different to when you feel good and you feel confident, you go forward and you progress your life in so many ways, you know, whether it's your well, job, I, yeah, you know. I guess, I guess with that is it's like feeling that way takes up so much of your mental bandwidth. And like when you don't feel that way, it also frees up your mental clarity to think about other things. You know? Definitely. And I think the reason a couple would wait till rock bottom is there's two people in this situation. It's very different when one person is struggling mm. in the sense of an individual. Because when there's a couple in tow, now you were just saying that like, you know, the biggest, one of the biggest um, factors behind divorce is obviously, you know, finances and also the, the demands of, of child, like yeah, childcare. The, the way but, a child impacts your relationship prior to having kids. But a large percentage is also made up of the fact that somebody doesn't like what somebody looks like now or how they've effectively gone inside of themselves or they don't yeah, look after themselves. Changed, and now this is yeah. not representing who they married or who they wanted to be with in a couple, sure. in a relationship, a partnership or whatever. Mm. And so if in a relationship, imagine if myself and you know me and you haven't had issues together and what we both look like you Mm. know what I mean now Mm. take myself out of our before we met Mm. and me being very very overweight in a relationship yeah was my partner at that time going to tell me that I was overweight and do something about it no until you break up but you see the factors behind why you broke up because there's a number of factors here i didn't like myself do you know what i mean mm. i was abusing myself on a number of different levels they weren't boosting my confidence or helping me in fact they were enabling it mm. you know what i mean and so that in, in its own right means that relationship's not healthy you know this is something yeah. we need to go separate ways yeah. now when you're married for example that's pretty serious because i know marriage is i kind of just think it's oh whatever do you know what i mean it's marriage oh so you're like this oh, oh uh, like but it it doesn't change anything, marriage. It just means it makes it harder to like walk away on an argument and be like, fuck you. But you want to, you formed a partnership because most of the time when people get married, they love each other. You know, they've met each other, they formed a bond, they want to experience life together. Now, at no point, I think, do any party mm. want to necessarily upset either one. Mm. And so it only comes to the point of rock bottom with a couple mm. where the factors that society tells us about 
go skew if. So what I mean by that is society can say to us, you need to be having sex three times a week for a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. You need to be doing X, do you know what I mean? For a healthy relationship. You need to do it. So we're formed in our brains like, oh God, if we don't fucking bang three times a week, we've got a shit relationship. Mm -hmm. Now what Mm -hmm. happens when that time gets lengthened and lengthened, should there not be any anomalies here? God, there could be plenty of anomalies here, but I'm just saying in hindsight, when that time goes apart, apart, you start to think, your relationship shit okay yeah. now if two people in the party are also not feeling great about themselves yes. likelihood is and this is proven in yes. you know in science scientific evidence yeah. that they're not going to want to get their clothes off and get down mm. to it and so mm. i think the reason couples will wait to rock bottom is when those society ridden rules start to really grate on the relationship so the wife might be reading something or the part, you know, the wife mm, or the woman mm, or the man in the mm. relationship might be reading something and they go, oh, that's not yeah, us. Or maybe talking mean? to their, their friends and Yeah, spouses. and their friends might be having fucking sex six times a week, you know, clothes yeah. off, holidays, love ourselves. Oh, I'm so amongst them. We even bath together. Do you know what I mean? Like, and you're there like, fuck, we haven't even touched each other's genitals since like 2016. Yeah. We're still together. We still respect each other. But we're not at our ultimate and I think only comes to rock bottom the reason they let it go to rock bottom is because I think there's a sense of fear between it's not just yourself you're Mm. taking into account you need to also see those signals from your other partner where it's like okay he also is you know he's gained some weight he's not performing too well at work he's not feeling great he's not happy he's not you know those are the factors that you start to go well neither am I you know and it's not necessarily to do with the relationship so then how do you how do you uh bridge that gap between communicating and actual like making a change i think the worst thing we can ever do is is fester around problems in people's lifestyles i've always said this because the more we fester around the problems the less likely they are there is ever going to be a solution so i think in, you know when somebody comes to you for help and it's very much the same as when we were working with just individuals but also now with couples mm. you you know, our job obviously is very in-depth. Like we come as effectively a, we are here to listen, do you know what I mean? And to guide you through step by step. We're not here to judge and to break down your relate. you know what I mean? And tell you that this is shit. You know, we want to put you both together in a situation where you're both wanting to be make a change. Now, one of you is probably going to be a little bit more keen than the other. You know, it's very mm. normal, but... I think how you get past it is effectively just allowing people to communicate. It's very rare without distractions these days that Mm. couples can communicate. And that could be maybe you have children. That is a huge distraction. You know, you've got plenty of things going on other than conversing about the fact that you need to stop eating X and, you you know, you're gaining weight. The the same with you could have distractions that works very stressful and the other partner doesn't want to stress the other partner out by bringing it up. You know, Mm. there's so many factors behind, you know, so the, the best step forward it's bringing people together on the same and aligning their priorities. That doesn't mean that you have to do everything together. God, that would be so annoying. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Everything's got to be done together like your Siamese twins. But yeah. the it's just acknowledging. It's acknowledging that, that both uh, of you are there to because you want yeah, to see be, each other two, till days you die. Like yeah, hopefully years goals, and years and down the line. But just understanding that by supporting one another to achieve, whether it's a collective goal or a personal goal, will. Uh, have a positive impact on that person's behavior Mm. and mental health in general which seems like a bit of a no-brainer yeah i mean like the couples we've worked everybody's feeling better about themselves and feeling healthier and feeling more vibrant and and things like that then it's just going to have nothing but a positive impact on your on your relationship yeah and i think obviously just like from experience side like the results you see when you work together as a team are astounding. Now, I appreciate there's probably people that are listening to this that aren't in a relationship and you're probably like, oh, just fuck off, will you? Yeah. Like, really appreciate that. Like, you're come again, like, you know, this might not resonate with you. But, you know, just the same as, like, you want to work for yourself. Like, if you can say in wedding vows of some degree or another, you know, whether it's, you know, 
Christian terms, you'd say, what is it? Till death do us part, you know, or in sickness and in health. Like, why is it that couples wait to literally be on deathbed or Mm. sick with like, you know, likely in hospital being diagnosed with something absolutely horrific, you know, that they go, actually, we should be helping one another when it comes to our health. I think it's just generic human nature, though, to kind of uh, procrastinate and put things off until it's like a dire need to do it yeah 100 percent. i'd say that I'd, like at school i was like fuck why though? am i doing but this why, until it's... but why what is the psychology because we that? because we don't it's uncomfortable so it's when we know so when when we know something and we know it well we'll action it it's just a habit when we know something we're confident in it when you don't know about it it's very easy to push I it off i understand like yeah you know, I, I get that but it's like you it's like when you were given homework, you knew that you could go home. No, you knew you could fucking. Yeah, you, but knew you knew that the teacher was yeah. going to excuse you because no, my parents were You were knew that fees. you could go home <laughs> in your own time, sit down, do it, get it done, but you choose not to do that. Can and I you be. You choose to go the day before. That's the wrong analogy, though. Get someone's homework 20 minutes before the thing, bang it out, and hope for wrong the Wrong analogy, because school is very, very different. In the fact that, I mean, is why somebody wouldn't okay, do their well, homework. Another analogy, you don't go to the dentist until your teeth are falling, literally falling out your face. Yes, yeah, because you just don't respect what you fucking look like. There we go. Um, like, it's true. Like, if you can't look at your, no, your teeth that. and go, like, fuck, like, what a cretin then you know or you can't afford it there's also two yeah, other fucking no, things yeah. maybe you can't afford it but you Under can't the use the analogy you can but like no but i'm just saying the, that you go why do we procrastinate and not procrastinate but, but why do why do we leave it to the last minute well you can't say about school because what i'm trying to say about school is it's a very analogy to human like day-to-day life the reason a child doesn't want to go back and do their homework is because they've just sat at school all fucking day and the best option is sims on the computer or tracy beaker do you know what i mean like, it's like there is far better options you've just sat there and had to listen as a child and especially one that me like being fucking dyslexic adhd a number of different ways i didn't like to listen for that long a period of time you know i want to come home and not do it but i also think there's that factor again Mm. is i didn't know half the answers to the homework because i wasn't listening so then there's that thing i don't want to do it again until i know i can wait for somebody to just copy off of you know yeah so i think there is a thing of not why do we we don't sometimes like to accept when we are at our most vulnerable and our weakest, because why would we? We avoid that. We don't like sitting in our weaknesses. We only fo- focus on our strong points. So, you know, a man might feel that his strong point is in the workplace, you know what I mean? And mm. I don't know, closing fucking deals or doing, you know, that's his strong point. But so your stereotypical example is, for example, a man who... Uh, you know, lives a very, you know, stressful life and, and does X, Y, Z, doesn't look after their health and necess- uh, necessarily goes for a checkup and they're like, oh, dude, you know, you're fucked. And then it's a mad scramble. So, but like, why is it that? But again, if we all, if we had the edu, like, and it's not just education, oh, I've read something online. I mean, like, if we had the education and the knowledge, and this is going back to what you said at the start, that people do know what they're doing at their bottom. No, because it's the same with, which I'm Mm. against, but I also understand, is jobs that require night shifts. Okay, now this is a good example of night shifts Mm. are horrific for a human's health. Like yes. horrific, and is yeah. proven you're never going to have optimal health if you constantly live in a night shift environment due yeah. to the fact your circadian rhythm is never going to match up with what you need to do. Yeah, you can try your best to mitigate. You can try, it. but it's never going to be optimal. No. Now, we have dealt with numerous clients who have been night shift workers who have had de- very decent jobs, mm. you know what I mean? And their companies have required them to work hectic hours, you know, throughout the night. Yeah. And they have been consistently very, very ill, like very ill, you know, yeah. consistent, you know, they've struggled massively with their weight. They have appalling, you know, health overall, mm. But yet the company is there for the profit and for the employee to just work, but yet doesn't educate 
the the employee on the risk factors behind working nights. Now somebody needs to earn yeah, money. Why would you do that? Though? You're like, hi, this is really bad for you. Please do it. They're going to be like, no, or pay me more. Well, it's like smoking. Here's like a fetus on a you bed. Know, if you, ever, if you sat everybody down that did a night shift and was like, right, this is your circadian rhythm. This is how it's They're doing it because they get paid more. It's going to fuck up your digestion and it's going to impact this and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but that's blah. why I'm against the businesses actually make people you know, run Nobody's going to want to do it. And I, even I, if they do pay you, you know, well, how much, they're not paying you double. They're not paying you, you know, 150 grand a year. They're paying you like a little bit extra generally. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. I already, I started so that night shift conversation by saying I was against this level of, this level of work. Yeah, because sure. I can see why businesses utilize it. I can see the only, now being really honest with you, the mm. only benefit for somebody doing a night shift is they mm. are going to have extra pay. Sure. That I, is I, it. I, yeah, now, yeah. and those are all of the people we've worked with, they get paid more when yeah. they work at night. Exactly. Okay. So take that factor out of the equation. Nobody's going to go for the job. Because yeah, why the fuck the would you? Yeah. Now, is this an alarm bell potentially to the fact that society is growing fast too quickly in the sense of they have too much work and too much growth and expansion, which requires now humans to work at night? Now, I know it's happened for years. I'm not mm. oblivious to this. We've worked for tens of thousands of day at mm. night. But how can a HR of a company, human resource, you know, sign somebody up to a night shift, you know what I mean, schedule, horrific as what we've seen with some mm, of our clients, yeah, they have their client, you know, their their employees ill, like very ill, hospitalized, yeah. hospitalized, you know, you know, yeah. and it's not sellable. The only but thing is that extra bit of money, noises. but you know the reason people are doing it, it's because the extra money, which I totally get. Like, obviously people need to earn more money these days. They, mm. They've got shit to pay for. But is it not a little bit of an alarm bell that we've that the only jobs available are this? I mean, it's I not. I guess the only... you have to wait until you you know you it acts on your health, like we've been talking about getting to rock bottom. But you if you've maybe not got anybody is... around you, or your partner also works, you know, hectic night shifts, or or maybe has a very very you know hectic work schedule, or whatever, you're not necessarily mm. going to see it. You know, we, as I say, time and time again, sit in a very privileged, entitled position, not because. Yeah, but even when we were crazy shit, hours you know I mean? and crazy ridiculous hours, yeah, and, and it was. And what would always, I look like? We all, yeah, a complete state. I, I always had a sore throat, like twenty four. I had like I've been blessed with very good skin all the way in my life. I had fucking Chest acne all over my face. Yeah, which uh, I was constantly red. Do you know what I mean, I had yeah. high anxiety. I was on medication, left, yeah, right, and centre. Sure. I don't never slept. Do you know what I mean, I had like two hours sleep. I never ate nutritionally well because I couldn't manage it with my day. Yeah. And what did I feel like? Dog shit. And, and it I took me at that, least two years to get over that. Yeah. And, it, and we had pretty much got to, not rock bottom, but it was... Well, we did. That's why we went to Cape Town. Yeah. I think that was the only way that we were going to navigate why, our own health So then touching time. back on the topic, why did we wait that long? Number because one, we had consistent business and it's pushing us in a direction where we're distracted. And it's only when you stop do you realise how bad it really is. Uh, and this is what I'm trying to say. You know... It's it's only when you, see, you know, like we've dealt with couples, for example, who go on holiday with family friends and the family friends will take a picture of them, for example, mm. and, they, and they're like horrified by what they see. They're like, how the fuck did we get like this? You yeah. know, and that's a triggering factor is like, oh my God, I've seen it now, you know. And, and I would say a lot of the time with weight loss, in a couple sense, it would be spurred on by the picture that was taken at a family event or on a holiday or the fact that maybe, you know, we're coming out the mist. Obviously, we've come out of a pandemic mm -hmm. and people's health is really shit at the moment. So I guess, I guess what you're trying to say is, is uh, what prompts people to change when they've hit the metaphorical rock bottom is self-reflection. Hundred percent. And sometimes we just don't have time to self-reflect. Okay. Like, there's you're very you'll be very lucky if you've got. I think you think self-reflecting too you, much is a problem. But you know, I guess this is why you know when we do our weekly check-ins with clients, this is a good reason and keeps and has been scientifically shown to increase overall adherence and success when it comes to achieving your personal goals. Is, that ability to self-reflect on a consistent basis to 
to somebody that yeah. can help you yeah and also like you know you, yeah i mean they've got to analyze okay well how did my week go did i make the right nutritional choices and you know you by filling in a form and and things like that you're touching we, we, we do touch on it every single aspect of a person's you know self-care habit yeah and i think with data included like these days <laughs> you can track yeah. everything so we see you, do you know I mean? yeah. but like you know it's one of those things where you can't really sp- like when you go and self-reflect these days with a coach is you know you can't really hide from it and that's one of the best things mm. because i'll never forget a pt when i was like 12 and like morbid low obese and like everybody's at their wits end as to why i was such a fat child that mm. that um he was like, right, write me a food diary. And there I was like before my like session mm. as a 12 year old of the PT, how erratic anyway, mm. writing down that I'd eaten apple and I- rice cakes. Then I step on the scale. It's like, why are you heavier? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's like, have you missed out everything on your food diet? It seems like all you've eaten is rice cakes yeah. and apples. Yeah. And That's... it's like, yeah, my mum didn't feed me. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, literally, literally, it's like, you know, and so it's that thing of like, when you ask somebody because... And now this is an approach of a coach because Mm. there are multiple, there are different ways you can look at this. Mm. Now, how I just spoke about my situation experience with a food diary Mm. was directly related to how the person that was meant to be helping me would Mm. react when I had gained weight or not made progress. Now, I knew going in at 12 or 13 years old at that time, now I'll say this has happened multiple times in my Mm. life, going Mm. in, Mm. that I was going to get shit feedback. Do you know what I mean? I was going to be told that, what the fuck are you doing? You waste of space. Do you know what I mean? Get to grips with your fucking, you know what I mean? You're fat. you knew that by going up in weight, it was going to have a negative impact and going down in weight was going to have a positive impact. Well, this is the thing. No, it's, it's not necessarily to do with my weight. It's to do with how somebody responds to you not progressing Uh, and that is what makes and breaks in my opinion a good coach because you can directly blame people for not doing things but it's not going to help the situation if Mm. anything Mm. it's going to have a negative effect somebody's going to feel threatened and then lie so like Mm. what i did is i lied Mm. on my food diary that i'd eaten Mm. stuff i hadn't eaten do you know what i mean i'd eaten far more than that it wasn't rice cakes and apples but i did that and i wasn't honest because i didn't think that the trainer at the time Mm. was going to give me something that was positive or encouraging it was going to be shitting on me you know so that is very very important in making change so so what you're saying is if the coach potentially would have had a different response it would have you would have i would have been more truthful yeah different outcome now i think it's exactly the same with our clients are very truthful to us in their check-ins you know if they've had a bad week they will tell us they've had a bad week and that i think is one of the biggest things that forget all of this fanning around online social media whatever like as a coach yeah that is the relationship you need with a client is mm. when somebody is not going to lie to you. Mm. Now you often have moments where a lie is the first thing that comes out of your mouth because you just know you haven't done it. But on average, yeah. like you want to self-reflect in the best way possible. And the same with a couple, you know, if that means mm. that you communicate and have that moment between you once a week or twice mm. a week where you're going, how are you getting on? Do you know what I mean, what do you think we need to just do to make mm. ourselves more accountable? Mm. Or mm. what could we do next week that could really cement so some simple, habits? Yeah, but you it's know, just a so overlooked as well. But I don't, it? I've never liked the approach of people who have like blamed people for the reason why they're so mm. shit like there's so many reasons oh, why geez, yeah you see it so often uh, we've yeah. seen some horrific uh yeah and and you know there's some people you know, that go to coaches some for... of the face-to-face i remember remember that one guy when we were renting space where you just screamed at that woman yeah, and you know what? Like that woman would have been like, she would have been terrified. She would. Yeah, you're never going like, to build a trusty relationship when you treat people yeah, like this. Yeah, you just you can just see that you're just by doing that you're just just absolutely scrambling yeah. that woman's brain. And I think like for self reflection purposes, it's going to only make the situation worse. Number one, mm. people will resent it because if they know that mm. that you're about to go and check in or somebody's going to most of the time these people that don't really do check ins because they don't really care, but like you know that whole mentality Mm. behind actually i've got that time to reflect on how well we've done and Mm. how well i've done Mm. or what i need to improve or how i need to work on it Mm. you know 
that's only going to come when you have a trustworthy relationship with a coach sure. or somebody that helps and you. And I also think that we're very short, well, the vast majority of the people in the industry still, like you said, predetermine success and failure of how much you weigh. So Yeah. You and know. like for me, like if I take on a morbidly obese client, you know, who's come yeah. to me desperate mm. in, in need, there are two sides to this. One, you've got to be empathetic. Number one, I've been in a position where I understand mm. it, you mm. know, but number two, you know, week one's never going to be perfect. Week two is not going to be perfect. Week three, trying to do things that are very baby steps to mm. making you mm. happier. We're not doing this to cement some regime that you fucking hate. And that's going to take time. And so mm. people are very hard on themselves. In the first week or two, they haven't got to grips with everything. It's like, Jesus, like you've, you've come from nothing yeah. I think to people, stepping forward and asking for help, to people, getting the help. People underestimate just how much change there needs to be to, yeah. to and time but and it's also it's very uh confronting when you're having to change and like you said maybe your partner's not on board with that and then you're it's so confronting the fact you're like i want to do this to make myself feel better you should love and support me but you're actually my best hurdle that's very confronting. Or yeah, the and, but that, again, is how you manage. The in, relationship in, that you have with your friends where, you know, maybe your relationship with your mates is just on a purely bender, you know, getting pissed basis. And then you're like, if I'm not getting pissed with you or going out and doing X, Y, and Z, then, you know, our, our friendship's not that deep. That's but also I also think that if they were good friends, and this is what I always say, if they're a good friend, they'll they know, understand. They yeah. If they're not, which plenty of people, it's okay yeah. to lose people in your life as friends. Like, it's yeah, fucking but that, okay. For if some it's going to make you is better. Very, is super uncomfortable. Massively. Oh, fuck, the last thing you want. I, I get that. But then also, if, if it's you. I actually, I spoke with somebody a couple of months ago about this, and I said, Forget everybody around you and what they're saying to you because mm. they're not dealing with the problem that you're currently sat here disclosing mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. You, they're not dealing with the fact that they're about to be diabetic. They're yeah. not dealing with the fact that they are very unhealthy and they're getting massive health mm. concerns. They're not dealing with it. You are. And so if you want to live a long, healthy, quality, you know, high quality mm. of life, those people are never going to help you. You know what I mean? If you actually rely on what they say as being... Mm. I, I. That I had it all the time. I would have piled on like two though. stone you know and somebody I mean? would like, say, you look skinny. Yeah, but it's you're like going, you're such a liar. Yeah, <laughs> because that person's by, under, by they're like trying to outwit you because they don't have your best intentions at heart by when someone dresses like an absolute lunatic and you want them to nest it because then you know that you look better than them and there's a whole bunch of other... Yeah, and that's exactly you know, why I've got no How do I look? School. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that orange suit on you looks very flattering. So you just know that you're reinforcing the shit. That I was called behavior. bubbly so much as a personality. I just like yeah, and people blood. just know. And that FYI, if you nobody wants to bubbly, be lost, so as long as they're better than you, then that then that's what, you know what I mean. Then that's okay. So sometimes people will say things and big you up, or knowingly knowing that they're putting you on a pedestal because you look like a fool. Yeah, okay, but moving on to that, like, but you know, I do but think it's so it... confronting for some people having to reassess pretty much almost every aspect of their entire life to to but see. But being some honest with you, why would you be married to some? Like, I'm. This is. There's look, so no. many. Examples. Forget an arranged marriage. And yeah. forget the fact that a wife or a husband might be with <clears throat> either partner or wife and wife or husband and husband mm -hmm. for money. Okay, forget those two analogies. Yeah. Why do you want your uh, partner to have an ill quality of life? Do you know what I mean? No. Yeah, like, no, why would why, you? Why would you want that? So if they if they do want that for you and they're not supportive of it, then do you not think that that person's not right for you? Yeah, but, it's, but maybe that person is doing that because... Knowing that you are vulnerable makes them feel better about themselves. That's twisted. But that's exactly again why yeah, you should no, be that's with what somebody or involving. And so when you, you but know what, losing people around you yeah, is one of the hardest things you can the ever road, go. Then some, you know, most people don't like 
most people don't like change, you know what I mean? You go and change something in the grocery aisle, they'll go and complain, let alone changing their partner they've been with since they're 16, do you know what no, I mean? Like, but it's not changing your partner. It's communicating with your partner with empathy and mm. listening to both sides of the situation mm. to understand why somebody wants to do something and no, how I they're going to do that. it. Now, if you confront somebody and you say, you're fat, we need to go on a diet, that mm. is going to cause resentment and it's not going to be productive. Yeah. If you speak about maybe your partner, you're concerned about how much alcohol they're drinking. Mm. There's ways in which you communicate with people to get that across to somebody. Mm. So it could be that you bring in levels where you lead by example. So mm. you might be somebody that's very social. You might have dinner parties, go out for dinner with friends. Mm. And you might, between limit that you might say actually do you know what i'm going to lead by example tonight we're going to have food in and we're going to you know we're going to you know i'd, I'd like to get up tomorrow and let's actually be productive mm. do you know what i mean mm. start one you know what i mean that's only step one mm. but assigning blame to people like <laughs> your drinking is a fucking problem do you know what i mean your mm. blah blah is only going to make a situation worse so you've got to see both sides it's never both we're two different people. Me and you yeah, are two different course, people. Yeah. Our brains are never going to be thinking exactly the same thing of the mm. same words, you know? And mm. it's exactly the same in a situation where if you spell it out to them in a very empathetic way, yeah. the reasons why we need to be like this, or, mm. you know, we've been, tr this is a very prime example that we've dealt with with clients, is mm. they've been trying for children and yeah. they can't have children. And their exactly. doctor said that either one of you or either both of you have got you know are overweight and your health is being compounded by that mm. and your fertility is only going to increase potentially if you, you start to look after your health now that's a situation where both parties need to do something because if they want to have a child and they want to have it you know nat as naturally as possible mm. they both need to care about their health so there has to be a will and a want like it's the same with why do people get shredded for a wedding and then pile it all back on? It's because they're, oh, it's they a wedding. They want to look good it's, for the photos. And then... But if you both have a discussion, when you say to each other in sickness and health, or you're like, oh, would you like to be my girlfriend? Or would you yeah. like to be my boyfriend? Or whatever it's like that. It's very stereotypical for people. Why to... do you want your partner to be ill? Why do you want yeah. your partner to be or, unhappy? Or just feel, you know, feel bad about because... themselves or, and carry around a negative internal narrative. Like, as I said, I'm very good at getting rid of things. So my mindset's one of these and if you don't help me then i can i can talk but it's myself. very it's very common for for a couple to get like a, a wedge shred is a very uh common thing where where husbands and wives get together equally yeah like and that's 50, your wedding 50, so and generally and five years later they're like why are we like this i want to be back where we know, were when we got married like that's do you know how many people oh i wish we looked like we you know we were when we were you know when we got married or when we of, got together but, but why but is that because there's maybe one person so like there is a wedge thread, so there's a common goal there's a common you know denominator we're going to get married on x day both people want to look within their within there's an end goal their, you could say a date yeah but, but that's then, also how Everything why, runs in outside of that. Why? Why does the general level of support and coherence is that because one person might potentially have a goal or find it more important than the other person? What in the sense of a wedding? No, outside of that. When it comes to just general, because, like, as I say, time and time again, why? It's you not think necessarily it's what's happening in the next two years of your life. To... It's not the compounding effort that might happen in the next two years of your life. You, yeah. you know, any any ages could be listening to this right now. So if you're sat in your 30s, you know, actually, let's just put this... A lot of people haven't really understood. This is very, very off topic, but it kind of makes sense as to where I'm getting to. But... A lot of people until very, very recently didn't even understand their menstrual cycle as a woman. And only when they did start to understand their menstrual cycle and be switched onto it, did they really care about what was really going on day to day, shall we say. And I think that when it comes to, I guess, any kind of change or want in your life i guess you've got to like experience and educate yourself enough to then 
surpass I don't know starting something in any way or another and I think you know with when it comes to like why I don't know like say for example you you were very overweight Mm. and I wasn't and you said to me like I think I need to lose weight yeah and I said to you well remember like in a wedding going back Mm. to a wedding analogy like Mm. nobody wants to look back at wedding photos and go oh fuck do you know what I mean that oh we don't look great there do we do you know what I mean? And, th- and that's the, uh, the underlying desire. But what's the desire in the sense of, you know, when you surpass that is the fact that, like, you, you don't think about menopause when you're going through a menstrual cycle. Do you mm. know what I mean? You're not mm. thinking about that. You're thinking about how fucking traumatic it is that you've got to go through this shit every single month, mm. okay? And so many people say to you, oh, you've got to prepare for menopause from very, very young, which mm. I agree with. Do you know what mm. I mean? That doesn't necessarily come from like fantasizing about menopause. Mm. It comes down to the fact of lifting weights. Do you know what I mean? Eating a balanced diet, eating enough protein, helping the fact that later down the line that you're going to give yourself the foundation going mm. forward. Mm. Now, it's exactly the same. People can't necessarily think that, you know, every 12 weeks they need to like achieve some shredded result, you know. Mm. And it's the same with a relationship. Like, you're married to somebody or you want to have a long... time. Nobody goes into a relationship and goes, oh, this is going to end after a day. Do you know what I mean? Unless you're Kim Kardashian getting married. But, you know, in general terms, you're going to be... Whether you break up five years or one year down the line or whatever, you're going in there because you you love each other at the time. Mm -hmm. You love each other and you want to be together. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be thinking about the fact that, oh, what we're going to do for our health is what's necessary right here and then it's like when you actually have that time to enjoy with each other Mm. do you want to be feeling shit or do you want to be feeling good do you want to be feeling confident Mm. do you want to be giving yourself the best foundation now in these day and age and this lifestyle like we can't guarantee that we're not going to pick up cancer tomorrow do you know i mean we've got no idea now that's very prominent in both of our families and you know nothing no amount of exercise and health and nutrition can necessarily dictate if you get cancer. And so those are things that you can't necessarily control or avoid. I'm not Mm. saying everybody's getting cancer, but I'm just saying it in the terms of health. But what you can do, say you wanna have children, do you wanna feel like you're out of breath Mm. and you know unable to like look after the child do you want your child Mm. learning behaviors from you and habits that are going to follow through their life and the same with do you want to be going on holiday or when you've got the time or you know enjoying family time whatever feeling Mm. like shit no and it's Mm. exactly why forget the fact of the first time weight loss you know what i mean and all let's lose weight together the reason why you need to give a fuck about your health Mm. is because If you don't, or if one of you doesn't, it is going to affect the relationship one way or another. And it's coming to terms with the fact that it's a long-term thing. Mm. If I said to you, I want to get married to you, Mark, and Mm. then like my health declined, it would be shit because I might die, do you know what I mean? And then you'd be left alone. And it's exactly the same. I'm not saying we're all going to die. We will all die at some point. We just want to give ourselves the best quality of life and the best experiences together, feeling confident, feeling like, we want to sex or we want to do you know what i mean and we want yeah, to have not, the life that we want to live and i think it's not necessarily also just feeling confident it's just sometimes not having negative thoughts about yourself so you can just your mind is is able to think of other things you know because you know, yeah but that comes from confidence some people i don't think maybe some introverted individuals would struggle to gain confidence regardless of yeah, and this is the thing. Confidence it's like, I'm, within your own kind of... I'm not sitting here saying you need to be, like, co- like increasing confident or feeling yeah. confident. It's very different. Like, you don't need to be like... But, like, when I have... I'm, I'm still a confident person right now. Yeah. I feel good in myself and who yeah. I am as a person mm. and what I look like for me. Yeah. But I'm not bouncing from the fucking walls like I'm so boosted with confidence. Yeah. I just couldn't be more. I have moments where I'm self, you know, I don't have that much self-confidence and I need to overcome it. Mm. But you give yourself the best effect when you do look yeah. after yeah. yourself. Because we know, and it's it's scientifically there. I know mm. people don't necessarily want to accept it. But when we eat well and we exercise, it yeah. has a fucking amazing yeah. effect on our mental health. And that's health. the one thing that, like... It's undeniable, and there has there there has to be some credence to 
when you speak to any person that is, uh, you know, happy, a person that is confident, a person that is um, very successful, one thing that they all all have in common is when they say that they undergo healthier habits yeah. with exercise and nutrition, just how much m- more of an improvement there is in their overall. So, like, they're feeling already pretty fulfilled, pretty successful, you know. Yeah, it's, and it's like, the, it's kind of like, it's then, like the missing piece to a jigsaw, yeah. like, which is actually the main piece, because yeah. without your health, you're really nothing. You know, there's a lot do. of, yeah, there's a lot of, but it's like it's a very it's a very powerful you know and you can go into the 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 neurochemistry of how it impacts your uh no don't go into neurochemistry because you clearly can't yeah but it's just it has such a profound impact whether it's problem solving or well they say that it it just goes hand in hand it it fits we shouldn't be looking at things as parts do you know what I mean we should be looking at the parts mm. that all come together that fit like a jigsaw now when there's that missing part they all add up now some people yeah. as I said earlier in the conversation feel very confident in a workplace which means yeah. they'll stay around that workplace and feel very confident in that workplace and overwork because they are effectively slightly because they've got a control over they've got a control yes exactly yeah. so 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 they're kind of distracting themselves yeah. with overworking i've no, i have in fact uh, no, i yeah, would say that 70 percent, 80 percent of ceos that i've worked with have all had this mentality mm. where ceos that are potentially over the age of 50 i'm making that comment just because i'm being quite specific but 40 or 50 years old in this yeah. gener- this generation a lot of CEOs and very successful people I've worked with mm. have this utter drive to work and yeah. won't stop. They won't take holiday. They, 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 they yeah. work, they work, they earn shit tons of money, but their health yeah. is Terrible. degrading by the second. And, and just, that's because they've yeah. effectively, that key part of their life, yeah. or not key part, that jigsaw puzzle, they've stacked up all of the jigsaw puzzle, do you know what I mean? Instead of putting it together, they've mm. sucked it all upon to just put all of their things into one thing and not really think about mm. the overall picture because come 60 years old, 65, you mm. don't know what could happen to you and you've earned all of that money, mm. you've built all this time for stress, you've never had a break, We've you've never no, looked yeah. after yourself and now you can't enjoy it. We know loads of uh, businessmen and women Unfortunately, that have had yeah. to retire and you know hang their boots up because of their, their health. Yeah, and um, and this is what I said going back to night shifts. It's, it is this thing of how fast, like, this is society. The more we work, the more we earn, the more we get, the more we have. The, you know, it's this yeah. whole thing. And I, I totally see the rat race, you know. Yeah. But it's also like, think just a little bit longer. And this is what mm. I'm saying about that couples started. That self-reflection is, is ne- yeah. a necessity of... of just think Anal- reanalyzing your habits and that, this is the thing is it can be very confronting when you self-analyze your own habits and you look back and you think wow far i didn't really do very well did i and it's very confronting and but you have to that is a, a learning process when you self-analyze there's ro- always room for improvement like and adult life will not to... give you like I passed uh, I participated sticker from sports no, day. It will no. give you like you're not number one. Now get on with it. Now yeah. that is adult life. It's not child. Let's include everybody. Oh, well no. done for taking no, part. It's a rat Do you know what I mean, race. it's it's literally a rat race. And like we're not going to lie about that. You know, people do jobs to fucking earn money. You know. They want to go up because they obviously some people are very good at the job and love what they do. But like in the sense of, you know, people want to earn money. If money wasn't a thing in this world, I don't think many people would be working. So I do think it's just nobody would be working. No, I think a lot of people would try and like, yeah, they would, yeah, I guess I guess it'd be very different. So we can't really say who would be working and who would not. But you shouldn't be seeing like. I know, like, when you do a business plan these days, and it's like, right, think five years ahead, you're like, what the fuck even happened in the last five years, let alone, like, the next five years? I'm not saying that in 10 years' time you need to know exactly that when you and your wife or your partner no. stand on the beach, you need to be ripped to shreds because your health is so important and all of that. Yeah. What I'm saying is just think a bit more. When you're <laughs> with somebody that's a partnership for, for hopefully what your dream is forever, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm. 
you need to like look after one another. You need to yeah. do stuff that's going to help you and still have fucking fun. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And don't ever fall into society's brackets where you need to do things because others have done yeah, it. You don't, know, don't it's listen, don't it's like just you know. And so why do we leave it till rock bottom? Well, I think we've kind of concluded with the fact that there's a number of different factors why we would leave it to rock bottom. But to get, stop it from getting to rock bottom, there needs to be communication and self reflection. Self reflection on a consistent basis. And guys, like we're the like least like journal, like write a diary and tell us how you feel, yeah. but it. Self-reflection is a very hard thing to get these days. No, it is. Because we're either yeah. waiting for somebody to tell us what they think about us, do you know what I mean? For us to then go, oh, I've got an ego now, or I feel good about mm. myself, when actually we're working with our most powerful source, which is ourselves, yeah. do you know what I mean? And I think self-reflection and understanding where, where your issues might be and mm. how you're going to get past them. Every issue in this world barring some, I would say, are solvable mm. uh, or have ways for intervention, shall I say. Not everything's solvable, but, you know, it's not everything's an end solution. But there's there's ways you can think about, you know, yeah. multiple situations mm. in your life. So, yeah, I think we'll wrap up today with... Um, yeah, yeah. I think that was quite a good podcast, to oh, be quite honest. No, I deserve <laughs> a break. <laughs> Might have a Kit Kat now. Mm. Um, no, and... So that's our first one of 2023. It was going to be a bit earlier, but we've just had so much stuff going on that we wanted to really sit down and be able to have time to chat. But yeah. we're going to be doing this every week. And if we don't turn up next week, please yeah. message us and tell, we, tell us that we're... Yeah, we need to be consistent and adherent like everybody else. Yeah. Just in just... different aspects of our life. Yeah, I think consistent here and is... that's the thing, it's like just do. because you've got one aspect of... Of your doesn't life mean you're consistent under, in everything. Yeah, it exactly. doesn't mean you. Everyone's got their vices, and everyone can do better in different areas. But what? Um, why was the reason? Now this is the thing. Okay, okay. So there was a little bit of anomaly when we moved. That's the reason why we stopped the podcast for a period of time because we just didn't have the time and the environment wasn't right. Sure. But the biggest anomaly was is that we didn't pre-plan when we would be recording. So we used to have the day that we would record and mm. it would go up the next day and it would all function really well. And that slid because yeah. of our schedule changing. So you know what I mean? But that's self-reflection for you. Huge sigh. <laughs> Huge sigh. So everybody, let's all make it through January. It'll yeah. be February for the next fucking four weeks. And then hopefully it'll be spring and we'll all be happy. Um, anyway, until yeah, next time. vitamin D. Yes, maybe we will have a bit of vitamin D. I'm maybe joking. you can get the D. Oh, shut up, Mark.